Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we are going to be learning about water as the universal solvent. It's... Well, welcome back. Now in the last couple of videos we've been learning about some of the pretty cool properties that water has. And here's another one. Water is often referred to as the universal solvent. Now, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean that water dissolves absolutely everything? Well, let's zoom in and take a look. All right, so I've got four beakers full of distilled water, and I've got four different substances that I'm going to be putting in. All right, so the first one here is good old table salt, sodium chloride. So let's pour a little bit of that on in, like so. Here I've got me a bag of sucrose, just regular sugar. So let's get some of this, pour that on in there. All right. I also have a piece of candle wax, which its formula is C25H52. So we're gonna place that right on in. And then last but not least, I've got some calcium carbonate here, uh, better known as chalk dust. All right, so let's get a little bit of that on here. And put that on in, like so. All right, now I'm gonna give everything here a couple minutes to uh, give it a chance to dissolve if it's going to. So I'll see you here in a couple minutes. All right, so let's see what's happened. Here is the sodium chloride, and as you can see up close, there is no more salt in there. It has 100% completely dissolved. Here's the sucrose, same story, completely gone. So sucrose also dissolves in water. And here is the candle wax. Yeah, can you guys see that? The uh, piece of wax is still just floating right there on top, nothing happening. Uh, with that one, let me turn around this way, <laughs> there we go, that's a much better look. Um, so clearly it does not dissolve. And here, the calcium carbonate, or the chalk dust, and you can very clearly see this one also does not dissolve in water. So let's talk about what's going on here. All right, so sodium chloride dissolved, why? Well, it's an ionic compound. And what are ionic compounds made of? They're made up of ions, of course, right? The ion ic compound, right, made of ions. And what are ions? They are atoms that have a charge, positive and negative charges. Now what could that possibly have in common with water? Well remember, water is a polar covalent molecule. Polar means that there is a partial positive and partial negative charge. So water has partial charges, sodium chloride has charges, that works, okay? The sugar, well, why does the sugar dissolve? Well, very simply because sugar is also a polar covalent compound. Water is a polar covalent compound. They have the same polarity. So since they line up like that, they both have the partial charges, they're going to uh, mix well together. The candle wax, well, uh, candle wax is a nonpolar covalent compound. There are no charges because those electrons are being shared equally. And so that is why nonpolar compounds like wax and oil is not able to mix with water. Right? Water is polar, wax is nonpolar, they don't mix. Now, the calcium carbonate is an interesting little uh, situation here. So obviously things like sodium chloride dissolves, so why doesn't other ionic compounds like calcium carbonate? Well, that is an excellent question and one that I'm going to wait and answer in the next video. So stay tuned for that one. All right, I got one more thing I'd like to show you. I'm going to clear all this out and then I'll be right back with one more example. All right, so I've got two fresh beakers here. This one with distilled water and this one with lamp oil. And here I have some regular dish soap. Now why might this be an interesting example? Well check out this picture right here and you can see what's going on with the, the soap on the molecular level. Now on one side of it you see those partial positive and partial negative symbols. What does that mean? Well it means that that part of the molecule is polar and the other part 
is nonpolar. So what does that mean? Well, we can put the soap here. Of course, it's going to be slow. <laughs> we can put it into water. I can also come over here and put it into the oil. And once again, we're going to give it a few minutes and see what happens. All right, so see you soon. Okay, so here's the water, and you can clearly see that the soap dissolves pretty nice and evenly within the water. Why? Because there's that one part of the molecule that is polar, which allows it to mix with the polar water. Here is the oil. Now, does it mix the exact same way as water? Well, no, but it's pretty obviously uh, mixing quite well with the oil as well. Why is that? Because there's a part of that molecule that is also nonpolar, thus allowing it to mix with the nonpolar oil. So if you don't listen to anything else I teach you in these videos, this is the most important life lesson. This is why we use soap to clean everything. It is both polar and nonpolar. All of the other nonpolar substances that we use, fats, oils, and other things, you know, waxes, things of, of that nature, you're not gonna clean it with just water. But when you put the soap on it, the nonpolar part of the soap is going to mix with the nonpolar substances like the fats and oils. And then when you rinse the water on top of it, clearly the water is going to take the polar part of, so uh, polar part of soap and take it right on out. And this is why we use soap every day. And why I hope you use soap every day when you take a shower. Every day. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was interesting and helpful. If you have any further questions, please be sure to comment below. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Wait, not a